Richardson Hitchens came into this fight with Gustavo Lemos, and he was talking big. I mean, he was coming in here saying, I'm the man at 140 pounds. Everybody else needs to step out of the way. This is going to be the Hitchens era. It's just a matter of time before I get to all these guys. And as soon as I do, they're done. Every single one called out Subriel Matias and called out Devin Haney by name. Now, on the one hand, you could look at it and say, maybe he's overlooking his opponent in front of him. A lot of guys do it, right? Easy to do when you come in and you're a big favorite in the fight. But then he goes in there and he steps into this fight. And let me tell you something. I could tell from the first round that the man wasn't comfortable. It, it, it was super obvious. Clarissa Shields called it out. She said, During, early in these rounds, especially when you're looking at these first rounds, your back should never touch the ropes. You're the guy who's moving around the ring. You're the guy who wants to be the boxer. Your back should never touch the ropes. It's too early in the fight, right? Because the fact of the matter is, as fights go on, they tend to get a little bit closer. So if you're already using all of the real estate in the ring in the first rounds or, or even just in the early rounds, you're going to have nowhere to go as the fight gets closer. So unless you're a good inside fighter, it's going to be problematic. So we see right early in the rounds, he's moving around. He's already got his back touching the ropes in some occasions. Now, Sergio Mora also came out and said, look, it's not a problem that his back are touching the ropes. It's not a problem that he's moving around so much. Look at how well he's pivoting. Look at how well he's moving out of danger. Look at how well he's avoiding any punches when he's in those quote unquote bad positions. Now look, both of those statements are true. You don't want your back to be up against the ropes. You don't want to use all the real estate. However, if you do find yourself in those positions, he was handling it extremely well. But then all of a sudden, what, maybe a minute and a half, minute left in the second round, everything changed. Everything changed. And what we saw from that point forward in the second round, which was just a monster right hand that Lemos landed, that kind of set the tone for the rest of the fight. I mean, we saw him go out there and we saw him land big right hands second round, third round. We saw him batter Hitchens in a lot of ways in the eighth round. I mean, he was hurt. I mean, his legs <laughs> his legs weren't underneath him. He was moving all over the place. He was constantly clinching and grabbing, reaching in a lot of situations. Not good. Now, all said and done, Hitchens ends up getting the win, right? A lot of back and forth in the fight. There was a lot of good things that he did. He, he, he got his shots off in a lot of areas. He, he, he stood his ground and made it a slugfest in some spots and actually got the better of some exchanges. But he ends up coming out with the victory, right? There was a lot of people who disputed it. There was a lot of people who thought Lemos won. I don't, you know, and I don't really argue that. If you want to turn around and you want to give that fight, to Gustavo Lemos, I, you can make a logical argument for that, man. You sit there and you watch that fight and you look at all the good work that he did, okay? 115, 113, either way makes a lot of sense. And that's what two of the cards said. But 117, 111 is ridiculous. And we've seen a lot of bad judging this, in this sport, and this is just another example of it, right? But I'm not going to harp too much on that because at the end of the day, I'm not going to come out here and say that it was a robbery. I'm not going to come out here and say that it was a horrible decision or anything like that. Hitchens ends up getting the victory. What I am going to talk about is what comes next, right? Because we saw that this one was an IBF eliminator. So that means he, he's supposed to be fighting the winner of Sabrio Matias and Liam Parle. He's not ready for that, man. Let's just assume that Sabrio Matias comes out with that victory. Do you think that he's going to be able to go in there with the way that he was getting smashed with right hands tonight and he's going to be able to come out with a victory in that? You think he's even going to be able to last 12 rounds if he ends up getting caught with those many right hands that cleanly? I mean, if we're being honest with each other, what we saw tonight was a man who didn't really have an answer for a pressure fighter, a guy who was going to come forward, a guy who was going to throw combinations, a guy who was going to figure out a way to get in your chest, to get inside. He was going to, particularly with that big overhand right. This guy's talking about the best in the division and 140 pounds is stacked. When we look at Junior Walterway, we're talking about a stacked division. Just think about the champions here. We're talking about Devin Haney, Tiafimo Lopez. Isak Cruz, who just picked up the belt last week after smashing Romero. And then we're talking about Sabrio Matiz. Come on, man. And I mean, on the outside looking in, we've got Sandor Martin. And I'm not saying that he's some, you know, super outstanding standout fighter or anything like that. But we just heard Eddie Hearn talking about how he already had to, he already accepted step aside money from Devin Haney because he's the WBC mandatory. So he accepted step aside money from Devin Haney so that Devin Haney could get this fight with Ryan Garcia. Right now, A.D. Hearn keeps talking about how he doesn't believe that Devin Haney is going to fight Sandy or Martin. He would much rather vacate the belt and go and get big money fights. And it's not that he's scared of Sandy or Martin or that he's worried about getting a loss or something like that. He said it's simply for the fact that Sandy or Martin is not a money fight. 
There's no way that Devin Haney is going to go from a fight of Ryan Garcia's caliber and pulling in a big payday like that and then turning around and accepting a much smaller payday with Sandor Martin. Yet at the same time, we see Devin Haney saying he wants all the smoke, right? That he wants to turn around and get undisputed at 140 pounds. He wants to snatch all the belts. So he's going to make his way through the champions, whoever they may be. Do you think that what we saw tonight from Hitchens is going to be enough to stand up to a Devin Haney? It's going to be enough to stand up to a Tiafimo Lopez. It's going to be enough to stand up to an Isak Cruz. Think about that when we're talking about a pressure fighter. When we're talking about a guy who couldn't handle a pressure fighter tonight, think about the type of pressure fighter that we're dealing with when we talk about Isak Cruz. Come on, man. Look, now I'm not saying that the man can't go out there and make it happen. We're talking about somebody who's incredibly talented. We're talking about somebody who's got a very good offensive arsenal. We're talking about somebody who's shown the ability to do a lot of things. So it's not like I'm writing him off. It's not like I'm saying he was never who we thought he was, that he's never going to make it and blah, 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 and, 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 and overselling what we see off of one fight. Now, that'd be ridiculous. But what I'm saying is the man's going to have to step his game up. If he thinks he's going to go in there at 140 pounds, he's going to all of a sudden make these big waves. He's going to come to the top of the division. It's going to take more than what we saw tonight. You know, that being said, every night can't be your best night. Every night that you go out there can't be amazing. And we get these small glimpses of fighters. I've said it before and I'll say it again. You look at major sports, where we're talking about the NBA, Major League Baseball, the NFL, any kind of major sport, you see these athletes compete so frequently that when you see one of them go out there and put out a bad performance on any one individual game, it's not that big of a deal. Nobody blows it to be something up bigger than it is because you see them so much. And that bad performance just kind of fades in the wayside. But when you only see a fighter come out there Two times a year, three times a year, even four times a year, which you, unfortunately you don't really see from top fighters. But we see them perform so infrequently that it gives us this opportunity to over-criticize everything that they do. right? And there's a variety of reasons why, why we can see a guy not perform well, from anything to a bad training camp, to issues outside the ring, to a bad weight cut, to a bad style matchup, to just all of a sudden waking up on fight day and really not feeling your best and having to go in there and really perform. You know, Emmanuel Stewart, phenomenal trainer, used to have a saying, when you find yourself in this bad situation, things aren't really going well, he'd be in the corner, he'd look at his fighter, he'd say, look, don't worry about looking good, just worry about winning, we'll look good next time. Because at the end of the day, that's what's most important. At the end of the day, that's what Hitchens did to, did for this fight. He did what he had to do, he ended up getting the victory. And it puts him in a position to see what's next, but man, we're going to find out. So, you know, let me know what you guys think. Personally, 140 junior Walter White absolutely stacked. I think the man is going to have some trouble there, but I do congratulate him for the victory tonight. What did you guys think? Did, were, were you impressed by what he bought? Was this just a situation where we were underestimating Lemos and this was never a scenario where Hitchens in, in, in any way, shape, or form was supposed to come on here and get this big victory. It was always going to be a tough fight because we were underestimating what the other man brought to the table. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think.